Okay, the next step of this assignment. You have to have one of your designs selected that you have shaded in, and when you're you colored with pencil, remember that was representing all the areas that were carving away from the rubber so that the white shapes are what's the highest area that's going to receive the ink that's going to make the print. So now we're ready to transfer this design onto your piece of rubber. So you're going to get another piece of tracing paper that is four by six inches, is close to the same size as your um, rectangle. It's okay if it's short or long a little bit. But do the best that you can to hold that down in the center. And now what you're going to be drawing is the contour lines, or just the outside edges of your lines, the shapes that you drew. And you want to press hard when you do this, and use a regular pencil, not a mechanical pencil. Okay, when you finish this, what we're going to be doing is printing this drawing onto your piece of rubber. All right, when you have that finished, remember that to make a print, you have to turn your tracing paper over backwards to get it to print. So you're going to get your um, piece of rubber, and you only get one piece. I do not have extras for you to get more than one. So you're going to turn it over. You're going to try to center that, and then you're going to print this. So remember that you're going to draw right over the top of the pencil lines, and when you lift up your tracing paper, it should have a print of your pattern. So when you take your tracing paper off, you're going to see that it did make a print. It's a copied on that rubber, and you can see um, the design from here. So now what you're going to do is you're going to look at your rough draft drawing, and now you're going to use a Sharpie marker, and you are going to um, outline over the top of your pencil. Because the pencil is going to smudge off, so we're going to do this in Sharpie so that the pencil doesn't smudge off before you can get this carved.
Okay, when I finish this, now what I'm going to do is give myself a visual guide to remember what pieces I'm carving away and what pieces I need to keep. So now I'm going to come in and I'm going to start to shade in, like I did on my rough draft here, all the pieces that I'm going to carve away. And it's okay if it's not shaded in perfectly. You can see that I'm just kind of roughly coloring this in just enough so I know exactly what I'm carving. Doesn't have to look perfect because you're going to be removing these pieces anyways. And the reason we're doing this is because as you start carving, you're going to forget um, which spots stay high, which spots need to be carved out that are low. As you're talking with friends, as we're listening to music, the more days you work on this, you're just going to get distracted and forget which pieces stay and which pieces sorry, uh, get carved out. So that's why we're coloring this in with Sharpie. So it's permanent and we remember what goes and what stays. Okay. And now we're ready to start to do the carving. Okay. Uh, to create your carving, you're going to be using a tool that's called a gouging tool. And each tool has a number on the handle in two places, and that matches the number on your desk. So make sure that you are taking the handle that is assigned to your desk. Um, so this tool, the gouging tool, if you look at it, um, the end of this uh, handle has a metal carving tool. And if I can tip it at the right angle, you'll see a letter V at the end. The letter V is what does the carving. Now this tool is kind of like a pair of scissors. I can touch it with my hands and I'm not going to bleed just like scissor blades. But when I start to apply force and pressure, if I am pushing this tool really strongly and it goes into my finger, yes, I'm going to cut myself. So you just need to be very careful and be aware of where your hands are at when you're using this tool. But you shouldn't be afraid to use the tool. Um, so I'm going to show you how to use it appropriately. So this tool is called a bench hook. It's a piece of metal that kind of looks like the letter Z or the letter N. So the end of the hook goes on the corner of your desk and you push it up against the table so that doesn't slide. Then you'll see there's a wall at the end and that's to um, prevent your stamp from sliding around. So when you're carving, you want your stamp up high so it's hitting this wall so it doesn't move. Um, and the hand not holding the gouging tool always has to be off to the side or down front close to your belly. Your hand never ever holds the piece of stamp as you're carving because you will carve into your finger and you will cut yourself. Your hand not holding the tool never ever holds the bench hook up high like this or like this because even still you're going to get your hand. So I watch um, you as you work. I circulate the room. I'm looking for hands in the wrong position. You'll hear me yell your name and tell you to move your hands. That is for safety reasons. So don't argue with me. Just get that hand out of the way. Okay, so when you're ready to carve, you want to look for the letter V at the end. That's the piece that's going into the rubber, and you're going to be carving away all the black Sharpie marker that you drew on your stamp. So um, put your rubber piece up high so it's touching the wall, and you always carve pushing down and forward, always down and forward. Uh, so I'm going to be removing all this Sharpie marker here, so I'm just going to show you how I begin by digging the letter V into the stamp, then I push forward and I angle it up to remove that rubber. And this is a very repetitive process where I carve down, push up, and you're going to see all these little rubber pieces start to uh, pull out of your stamp. So this is the correct way to carve your stamp. Now you could turn your blade a little to an angle where the V is tipped slightly because then you can use the whole side of the blade to scoop away bigger areas. And um, 
you always turn the stamp based upon the direction you want to carve. So I never want to carve to the left because now I'm headed towards my fingers and I never want to carve to the right um, because you don't get as much force and you're going to be carving into my desk over here because you're not going to hit a wall. That's what this wall is here for. So if I'm going to be carving the edge of this circle right here, I'm going to push my stamp up to the wall. I'm going to keep my fingers not holding the blade back behind or off to the side and I'm gonna follow this corner but now I'm going to start to curve to the left so instead of pushing to the left I'm going to turn my stamp so I'm always carving forward towards that wall turn my stamp push down carve forward so you can see how my tool hits that back wall and that's what the wall is there for So, sometimes it's easier to carve from the middle of the stamp out towards the side edges. So now I'm getting too close to my fingers. So I'm going to turn my stamp this way. Okay. And you're going to proceed to remove all the black pieces. So, um, your gouging tool has two different blades that you can work with. This one is the biggest blade and inside the handle, if I unscrew this, is my smaller blade. So remember that I don't have to be afraid to touch these with regular hand pressure but you need to learn how to switch out the blades. So um, to switch out your blade you're gonna untwist this metal piece and then you're going to pull out the blade. Now if this doesn't pull out to untwist it a little more to loosen it, but you don't want to separate all the pieces. They should still be connected. So now when I look at these tools, the carving side has the letter V at the end. The non-carving side is rounded. The rounded end is what goes into the handle. So if I want to try the small blade, I'm going to look inside the top of the handle. You'll see a metal ball piece and a space between the ball piece. That's where this rounded piece goes. So I'm going to stick that next to the rounded ball piece and I'm going to push that down until the widest part is touching the metal. So it's not touching yet, now it's touching. Now I'm going to hold those two pieces still and twist the handle to tighten that. Your carving tool should not be wiggling around. If it's wiggling, you didn't tighten it enough. And I like to store the extra one in the handle so I don't lose it. So now I'm going to try my detail um, blade or my small carving blade. So that can be good for um, designs that are small or spaces where you have tiny little gaps between the drawing. Um, so you can test both of these to figure out which blade is going to work best for your design, the big blade or the small blade. So that's what the small blade looks like. And I'm actually going to switch back to my big blade because I know the big blade is going to go faster for what I have left to carve. So I'm just going to open that up. Unscrew this just enough to pull the blade out. If it doesn't pull out, twist it a little more until it comes out. Always look for the rounded end. Place that in between this metal ball piece. Push it down so the widest part here is touching the metal. Hold that still and twist the handle. Turn it tight. And then I'm going to proceed to remove all the black Sharpie marker. Okay, let's talk about what happens if you accidentally cut yourself. So, um, you're not in trouble if you accidentally cut yourself, but I always have to know if you're bleeding in my classroom. So, um, first thing, if you notice that you cut yourself, your finger is bleeding, grab onto your finger and squeeze it as hard as you can. 
squeezing a um, cut area is going to help the blood flow slow down so you don't bleed as much. And then you need to tell me you're bleeding or tell a friend you're bleeding so they can tell me. Um, and then start going to the back sink. As soon as you get to the back sink, wash your hands with soap and water to clean out your cut. Get a paper towel, squeeze it tight again to stop the bleeding, and then I should be there by that time to look at your cut. If your cut looks like a paper cut, I'm just going to give you a band-aid and you'll be fine. If your cut looks deeper than a paper cut and is still bleeding, I'm going to send you to the nurse so the nurse can take care of you. Um, and we also need to clean up any blood that might be on the desk, on the tools, on the floor. We have to sanitize that. I've got cleaner for that. So please just um, look around your area. Let me know if you see blood that needs cleaned up. Um, so that is why we always, always keep our hand not holding the tool behind or at the bottom or off to the side so you're never ever cutting towards your fingers. Okay, so when it is time to clean up, at the end of class, you are going to keep your stamp in your art folder. I would write your name on the back so that we know it belongs to you. And then all these extra shavings you can pile up on your bench hook. This silver bucket is your trash can. You can just dump all that into your bucket. Then you need to make sure you still have a blade in the handle, a blade ready to cut with, then your bench hook and your carving tool are going to go inside your plastic Tupperware for your table. And then if one student can take the silver bucket and go throw away all the rubber shavings and bring that back, um, then I will be dismissing you a table at a time when I see that you've cleaned up appropriately.